everyone. So Rishi Sunak's budget was clearly sticking two fingers up to the British public. Now, um, the United Kingdom is still the fifth biggest economy in the world. So um, I'm thinking that the projections, that the forecast that this is going to be the biggest fall in our living standards since the 1950s, to be just another project fear. But the rise, uh, the, the rise in gas prices, um, gas and fuel prices, um, is, is very much concerning. Um, but the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, didn't do the people any favours at all. He blamed it on the slow economy, yet we are still the fifth biggest economy in the world. But to many of us, um, the slow economy is of no surprise whatsoever. The, at the start of the pandemic, the government, in the craziness with the lockdowns, and they prevented small and medium-sized businesses from being able to open their doors. Yet, they still allowed the big, large supermarkets, the big corporate supermarkets, um, they was allowed to open. Yet, small to medium-sized businesses, family-owned businesses, pubs, was not allowed to um, open. This was clearly going to result in the slowing down of the economy. On top of that, of course, in his wisdom, Rishi Sunak offered furlough to everybody to stay at home, don't go to work, work from home, or just stay at home and don't work and the government will pay you furlough. Of course, um, it wasn't one lockdown, it was four or five lockdowns, despite the first lockdown not working. The second lockdown, the third lockdown didn't work, but they carried on doing it. And um, that is the reason why our economy has slowed down. With the right rise in energy prices, rise in fuel prices, um, all Rishi Sunak could do to help the people was, was 5p off. 5p off a litre of fuel. I think it's 52% of um, fuel that you pay is um, 52 pence or 52% is government tax. And all he could offer is five pence. Of course, all these lockdowns, all these furlough payments, they were supported by the opposition party. Labour supported them. Labour actually wanted more lockdowns. If Labour was in charge, the economy would be even, in, would be even more disastrous. Crikey, they'd be saying it would be the biggest fall in living standards since the, the 1850s if Labour was in charge. So um, in the local elections, um, if you're angry with the government and angry with the Tories, don't think to yourself of voting for the Labour Party. No. Both parties have stuck two fingers up to the people, so stick two fingers up to both of them at the ballot box. There's plenty of other parties to vote for or vote for independence. Teach these two mainstream, uh, these these two entities, teach the, two, the main two parties need teaching a letter, lesson. Teach them a lesson at the ballot box this May and vote for neither of them. Make sure you vote, but don't vote for them too. Plenty of smaller parties to choose from, um, regardless of your political leanings, or vote for independent candidates. And for my sins, I did tune in to that lunatic radio station LBC to listen to the fallout. I mean, last week when I tuned in, I did hear somebody ring up who was complaining about the rape. They lived in Leeds. It was a left-wing liberal, a neoliberal, and um, doing the same old rhetoric, complaining about racism. She was talking about racism in London. But then she said she lived in Leeds. The radio presenter asked, is, is there racism in Leeds? She paused for a minute and then she went, yeah, there's a lot of patrioti patriotism in Leeds. And patriotism 
is racism. Now the video host helped her out, he agreed with her, and but he helped her out by... Well, he didn't really help her out, because what he said was, was, was crazy too. He replied, oh yes, there's a fine line between patriotism and racism. She went, yes, it's terrible in Leeds, there's lots of patriotism, and, and it's racism. It, it, it's blatant racism. But um, I was glad that I tuned in when I did, because I I heard the plight of a, um, an, an old age pensioner. She called into the station. She explained that her and her husband were old age pensioners and full time 24 hour carers. They care for their son. They said they've got a 38 year old son who has a. Um, who mentally and emotionally is, um, is, 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 she said he's basically a, a seven to eight year old. He's 38 year old in, in, in age, 38 years of age, but um, he's got a disability. So it, 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 she said in her own words, he's like, it's, it, it, it's like a seven to eight year old. Um, she explained what she'd been doing in the daytime. She said she'd sat with him. She watched two Thomas the Tank Engine films and um, she was explaining that she's an old age pensioner, her and her husband, full time, carers, 24 hours carers they give to their son. But they cannot, they, because they are old age pensioners, they can't apply to be carers so they don't get the carers allowance. So old age pensioners are not allowed for carers allowance so they don't get paid anything. And um, she she did make a point that she wasn't. Uh, she said, "Me and my husband aren't, aren't bad off actually, so it's uh, I'm not ringing up to complain. I'm not I'm not giving out a sob story. It's not it's not it's not always me. Um, I'm just ringing up to point it out because there could be other old age pensioners in a, in a similar bracket." She said, um, "She said it's it, it, it's going to be very hard with the rising energy prices, but um, you know predominantly she she said I." I just care about my son and um, when me and my husband pass, I hope that um, somebody else will look after him with the same, you know, the same care and attention. And my heart goes out to that woman and I hope, I hope, um, I hope that too. But also, um, not only does my heart go out to you, you are just one of the many examples as why I am, why I am. That makes me proud to be British. That really does. Um, and she highlighted an important thing there, carer's allowance. If you're an old age pensioner, you're not entitled to get the carer's allowance. This, this is... We've, we've clearly got idiots running the country. So whilst Rishi Sunak's budget hasn't given her or her husband anything, apart from five pence off a litre at a fuel station, Rishi Sunak's budget did make sure, though, that the MPs got their usual pay rise. Each and every MP is getting a pay rise of £2,000 a year. My word. But the government can find the money they charge us, the taxpayers, um, it costs £5 million pounds a day um, for the um, illegal immigrants that enter into the country illegally. They are housed up and down the country in hotels. And the message that they've been sending out with the Ukrainian refugees is that um, can people house them in their house? They've offered to pay the public £350 a month to house a Ukrainian family. That is a clear sign that the hotels are full. Yet, um, each and every day, hundreds are still coming in at Dover and this government is doing nothing about it. Last week, um, last week actually, I, I did notice... Um, even the mainstream media reported on it last week. In one day, 900 migrants arrived illegally at Dover. So the government can't find money in the budget to help the British people. But they can certainly 
find money to house migrants who enter the country illegally in five-star hotels. Now, that should make your blood boil. The next caller on LBC, though, was more of the norm on that station. It was a West Indian woman from Jamaica. She was complaining about the royal family. Um, Prince, um, not Harry, what's the other one called? Prince William and Kate um, visiting Jamaica. She was kicking off about that. Um, I mean, this, this lady says she was born in this country, but then she was... Um, she was talking about the Atlantic slave trade, the same old rhetoric we've been hearing since um, the death um, of an American by American police. All of a sudden, it, well, from day one, it just seems to be let's attack the British history, let's attack the British Empire. And it's been allowed and encouraged by the mainstream media. She's going on about the Atlantic slave trade. Um, and I thought to myself, wow. It happened over 200 years ago. I don't really care. And I'm sure the majority of people in this country don't really care about the Atlantic slave trade. Um, even the radio presenter, who, who that radio presenter, he, he, he is on the left. He is, um, he, he always goes on about Brexit. He's a Ramona. He's, just, he's the usual LBC left, raging left liberal. And, um, even he was struggling to see what a point was. It was just attacking the British. And then, um, so he challenged her and said, oh, I, I don't really see what your point is here. Um, because, of course, it, the, 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 the time has gone, um, which wasn't that long ago, actually, where a radio presenter would just be like, you know, ever used to cut, cut them off. Right, let's move on to the next caller. Oh, no, he was too scared of doing that because, of course, he might lose his job. The race card would probably be thrown his way. Um, but he couldn't see her point, he questioned her, and then she came up with this, and this was, she said, well, if I go to Europe um, and get on a train, or if I get on the train in this country, um, it's different to an English person getting on the train in Europe or in this country, because an English person wouldn't be discriminated against because they've got the same colour of skin. But if I just walk on a train because I'm in a minority on the train, I'm getting discriminated against. What? She didn't give any examples of being discriminated against. She just felt really upset that if she gets on a train in England or Europe, she's going to be in a minority. So I don't know what her point was. Um, maybe she's uh, wanting eventually to be the majority on a train in England or Europe. Um, wow. Uh, but, I mean, she was just attacking everything that's British. Um, I mean, the Royal, she even talked about the royal family needs to pay Jamaica some money. Um, all because of the Atlantic slave trade that happened over 200 years ago. I mean, come on, get over it. It's in the past. But, I mean, if I, if I went to someone's house as a guest and I walked into that house and I started attacking the inhabitants of that house, I started attacking everything about that house the culture, the inhabitants, the history of the house, maybe. If I went into that house and started attacking it, the person in that house would definitely tell me to leave that house and go home. Have a nice day, everyone, and join me for the next video. The sun's just coming up right now as I'm filming this video, and it looks like it's going to be another beautiful day. So, I'm expecting there's going to be quite large numbers coming in at Dover. Um, with this nice weather. I mean, last week, like I said, one day we had 900 parcels of diversity arrive on our shores. And the government is doing diddly squat about it. But the British taxpayer pays for housing 
Um, when they arrive here, they need... Well, they don't get... The, they're being put in five-star hotels and it's costing £5 million a day. That's why um, they're asking people to house Ukrainian refugees because there's no room in the hotels, so... Or they are reserving the spaces that are left in them hotels for the um, illegal arrivals in Dover. 